Magic 95.9, Baltimore's best variety of R&B. I am April Watts, and welcome to Facebook Live with GBMC. Today we have Dr. Raya Webe, and she's the medical director of the Sleep Center at GBMC, and we're going to talk about sleeping disorders today because sleep is something that all of us do, but, you know, a lot of people have trouble with it, and we don't even realize it. How are you today? I am doing well, thank you. Good, thank you for coming. How do you know if you have a sleep disorder and what are some of the common, what are some of the common symptoms? So, probably one of the most common sleep disorders uh, is sleep apnea, which is when somebody stops breathing at night. And mm -hmm. um, uh, some of the common symptoms for that would be snoring, which very often could be associated with a sleep disorder, um, experiencing sleepiness during the day uh, despite adequate sleep, uh, interrupted sleep or inability to maintain your sleep. Um, uh, what most people don't know, the waking up multiple times at night to use the restroom could be sometimes a sign of a sleep disorder. Oh, wow. Um, morning headaches could be a sign for that too and some of the other common symptoms like inability to fall asleep or stay asleep that people would actually experience and complain about are signs too okay if you suspect that you have a sleep disorder should you see your primary care physician first or can you just go to a specialist so i think that it depends a little bit on your health insurance if okay is if uh, you want to see your primary care first but i would encourage encourage everybody to speak to their primary care physician if they suspect they have a sleep disorder uh, and then the primary care physician could evaluate the problem, uh, evaluate how likely it is that a sleep uh, disorder is a problem and initiate the appropriate workup and order the tests. Okay. Or sent to a sleep uh, physician for a consultation. Alrighty. We want to let you know as well that this is a conversation, not just between myself and Dr. Webe, but with you. So if you have any questions, feel free to chime in at any time and we will address your questions as well. So if someone comes to see you and they suspect that they have a sleeping disorder, what's the first thing that happens? So the first thing that happens is that I would sit with them and ask them in detail about their sleep, mm -hmm. um, uh, sleep habits, um, the sleep complaints that they came uh, to talk to me about, and then we will do a physical examination mm -hmm. uh, to look for certain signs as well. And then uh, most of the time, if we are suspecting sleep apnea, for example, we would order a sleep study to find out for sure if, um, if there is a sleep disorder or not. What happens during a sleep test or a sleep study? So a sleep test uh, basically um, involves coming to the sleep lab and spending a night in the sleep lab. Oh, wow. And a sleep technician would hook uh, the patient up to wires and uh, we ask the patient to go to sleep and mm -hmm. then we um, look at their uh, sleep study and we evaluate if they have sleep apnea or not. If someone is diagnosed with sleep apnea, what are they given to treat it? Um, so if there is a diagnosis of sleep apnea, it depends a little bit on the degree of sleep apnea. If we are dealing with milder degrees of sleep apnea, um, we do have more than one option. But the most commonly used and most effective way to treat sleep apnea is by a CPAP machine. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the CPAP machine is a, a device that actually takes room air that the person breathes normally and pushes it through the nose down the throat to open the airways and it helps with the sleep apnea problem. So I see you have a couple of CPAP machines here, right? Yes. Can you do. show us how they work? So these are a couple examples of CPAP machines. So as you can see, what most people don't know is that these CPAP machines have become smaller. So they can be placed on the nightstand and simply uh, the usually there is a tube that connects to a certain interface. Mm -hmm. um, interfaces are, there are different types of interfaces. Some of them are like this, which cover the nose and mouth. Mm -hmm. More commonly, people choose uh, a nose interface or a nasal interface which covers the nose and then there are some smaller ones like this which just sit on the, the uh, nostrils on the nostrils and they would connect through a tube with uh, the CPAP machine uh, simply you just press the button and it pushes air under a certain pressure the pressure is preset ordered by the physician mm -hmm. based on what that person's sleep apnea particularly needs everybody's needs are different um, and it's as simple as that. You put it on and you fall asleep and it helps with the sleep apnea problem. Does the machine make a lot of noise? No, actually they have become pretty quiet. 
okay. pretty quiet. It might make white noise, but it, it mm -hmm. definitely um, isn't a big noise or anything. Like I was that. thinking about married couples and if one, like if, if the wife or the husband has sleep apnea, whether that would prevent their spouse from being able to sleep when so, they're with them. Not usually, because we hear more about complaints about partners snoring. So yes. the CPAP machine helps the snoring problem, yes. and generally speaking, is much more um, acceptable by the partner, actually. Partners are usually pretty happy. Oh, good stuff. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Laura. Laura says, I understand that sleep apnea is usually associated with increased age and weight, but I've heard that it's becoming more common in young people. What are the main causes of apnea for people in their 20s and 30s? So the most common reason for people who are normal weight and uh, younger would be the anatomy of the, um, of the throat and the face. Okay. Um, the sleep apnea is all about uh, the muscles in the back of the throat relaxing during sleep. So for example, if the base of the tongue and the roof of the mouth are close to each other, when they relax during sleep, they can collapse Got on it. top of each other and cause a constriction for the air to get in. Mm -hmm. um, some people have certain facial features that might make them a little bit more at risk. Um, uh, these would be probably the most common um, uh, reasons for why somebody like that would have sleep apnea. And it's not that it's becoming more common. I think it's becoming more and more recognized that not only uh, older people who are overweight have sleep mm -hmm. apnea, but rather some younger people, especially if they have symptoms. It's something that we always need to look for. Alrighty, I think we have another question. We do, we have a few questions. Uh, Christopher asks, how can you schedule a sleep test after a weight loss surgery? How do you schedule it? So yeah. basically you can either go to your primary care physician and um, ask them to order the test for you, mm -hmm. or call to a sleep physician and um, basically we can order the test for you and it's a le very legitimate um, reason to have a sleep study done to reevaluate. Okay. He also followed up by saying, I had sleep apnea and was told that it helps a lot. Uh, how could I get the test done to see the progress of it? So that might be interesting to see if his um, weight loss if, surgery, if, yeah, if the weight loss surgery made an impact on his Yes, sleep and apnea. Uh, definitely sleep apnea. Uh, is related to weight and mm -hmm. when you lose weight there's a very good chance that sleep apnea might improve or even resolve if significant weight loss happens. Uh, and Kelly asks, I tried Ambien and uh, it could never get me to sleep. So what would so, be another option for Kelly? So it depends a little bit on the nature of the complaint. If Certainly if there's a problem maintaining sleep I would encourage her to see her primary care physician or the sleep physician to look into the possibility of sleep apnea because it is a very common reason for why uh, people uh, people's sleep gets interrupted mm -hmm. and usually sleeping pills in this case won't help but rather actually they might worsen the situation a little bit in some cases so i would encourage her definitely to look into the possibility of sleep apnea okay so i see these cpap machines but I heard you mention something about a person's anatomy, you know, possibly causing their sleep apnea. So is there ever a possibility or, or ever an instance where a person has surgery, like physical surgery to prevent sleep apnea versus using the CPAP machines? Uh, so there are some surgeries that could be used for sleep apnea. One of them is on, uh, done by ear, nose and throat uh, uh, physicians and it's on the back of the throat where they try to take out part of the redundant tissue. Okay. The problem with these surgeries is that they are, um, the success rate isn't as great as CPAP and okay. it's an invasive way to treat sleep apnea. So mm -hmm. it th this treatment has made its way kind of further down on the list of possible treatments for sleep apnea. There is another more major surgery if somebody has major facial features predisposing them to sleep apnea uh, that involves, um, it's done by um, facial surgeons and it involves actually um, reconstructing the jaw. Oh, wow. But that is a very major surgery and it's really reserved for people who have major um, facial features that are predisposing them. It's, these are not commonly prescribed treatments. They are very invasive. Alrighty, do we have any more questions? Uh, we don't. We have some um, people that are uh, chiming in to say hello. Laura and Amber, hi, thanks for joining us. Good stuff. Hey, Laura, Amber. And I had a question, but I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to find out more about the sleep 
program with GBMC, how can they do so? So they can go on the GBMC website. It's gbmc.org slash sleep center at GBMC. That is our sleep center uh, website. And there's a lot of information on there. Uh, there's even a screening tool if they would like to know if they ha are at risk for sleep apnea. There is a way to schedule consultations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of information on there that they could. And there are also some resources that they could go on uh, line uh, for websites um, that have some information about sleep apnea as well. Okay, we talked a lot about sleep apnea, but what are some of the other sleep disorders? Are, is, is narcolepsy a disorder? How does that work? Insomnia, what about those? Yeah, so in our sleep clinic, we see uh, all kinds of sleep disorders. Any complaint, uh, insomnia is one of them, narcolepsy, which is uh, the tendency to fall asleep um, kind of, um, Abruptly, abruptly, yes. abru abruptly uh, that is one restless leg syndrome, people who sleepwalk or who act out their dreams, uh, problems with uh, uh, circadian rhythm disorders, which means if you have, uh, if your sleep cycle is shifted and you, you would like to fix it to a kind of normal, normal sleep schedule, people mm -hmm. with shift work. So there are, uh, there's a large variety of sleep disorders that we can al also treat. Interesting. So I have an ex-boyfriend who was somewhat narcoleptic. Mm -hmm. How do you fix that <laughs> how does that so we first of course we have to prove that it's narcolepsy narcolepsy is a pretty rare diagnosis so okay the first step usually is to find out if he has any more common reasons for why um, uh, he he might be experiencing sleepiness during the day um, one of them is sleep apnea of course we look at the sleep hygiene meaning mm -hmm. the sleep habits and okay. see if there's anything there or medications that are causing that if all that is not there then there's a sleep test that we do that might suggest the possibility of narcolepsy and the way to treat it is by medications there okay. are some medications that could be used in that case Alrighty. Do you have a final word for people who may be watching regarding sleep disorders? Just that uh, sleep is very important and uh, treatment of sleep disorders can improve quality of life and also uh, sleep apnea, if went unrecognized, can have some health risks. Um, it was shown, if untreated, to be associated with high blood pressure, worsening diabetes, oh, wow. irregular heart rhythms, even heart attacks and strokes if it's a significant degree. So don't ignore your sleep problems. We wow. can help. Wow. That is very important. I learned so much today. Thank you so very much, especially in this industry. We, we have this thing where we say no days off and, you know, we don't sleep and all of that. You thinking that that's something admirable and that's something noble. But you have taught me today that sleep is very important. So I'm going to do it's my best to get more. Okay. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you so very much. Once again, Thank that was Dr. Raya Webe of the medical and she's the medical director of the Sleep Center at GBMC.